Back in the 20s, Australian Portland Cement made a film about the thing they did well, making cement. It was a silent film because talkies weren't off the drawing board at that time, so the film was dotted with artistic captions that told the audience what was happening. The film opened on the company's huge quarry at Batesford near Geelong, Victoria. The power of the day was mainly steam, backed up by an army of workers with shovels and horsepower from real horses. A half a century later, the quarry is a whole lot wider and deeper. And that is because since 1890, it has been supplying limestone for what has become the biggest cement works in Australia. But now, power at the quarry and plant is a combination of diesel engines, natural gas and electricity, and an army of workers no longer wielding shovel. The present working level of the Australian Portland cement quarry floor is below sea level and below the level of the adjacent Moorabool River, with automatically controlled drainage pumps preventing the possibility of the quarry's flooding. That the quarry site was once an ocean floor is borne out by the large number of fossilized seashells and fish bones and teeth that are uncovered daily, some dating from 16 million years ago. The raw materials for Portland cement comprise approximately four parts of limestone to one part of clay and sand, depending on the type of cement to be produced. The deposit here at Batesford has these proportions naturally occurring. The quarry face to the expert eye is a shop window with all manner of stone and clay on display. That deep brown band at the top is the overburden. Composed mainly of soil and fragmented rock, it has to be removed to gain access to the limestone below. Expertly laid charges of sometimes hundreds of tons of explosives loosen the overburden thousands of tons at a time. Then the big shovels can go to work, filling the dump trucks with more than 15 tons at a time. The trucks carry the overburden to dump sites especially selected around the area, where for years a program referred to locally as casual beautification for the future has been carried out. Once the overburden has been removed, the drillers move in. The charges are laid. And when all is ready, the charges are fired to fragment the limestone prior to crushing. Once again, the giant shovels load the shuttle of trucks that carry the limestone to the crusher on the quarry floor. From the chute, an apron conveyor carries the limestone into the crusher. The weight and progress of the limestone are monitored continually. Now the big pieces are little ones and they stream uphill on the endless conveyor belt system. Still within the quarry area, samples are taken from the belt, fed into a crusher and after drying, stone quality is carefully tested to ensure that quality is correct upon arrival at the plant stockpile. Now the crushed stone has a journey of over six kilometers to reach the company's plant at Fyansford. Throughout the years, Australian Portland cement has employed a variety of methods in spanning the distance. Horsepower, rail, and an aerial ropeway system. Today's conveyor belt system is a sophisticated complex with electronic watchdogs guarding against any error or change in performance. 
The covered conveyor belt snaking across the countryside speeds the crushed limestone to the plant stockpile at better than 1,300 tons an hour. From the stockpile, remotely controlled reclaimed conveyors feed the limestone to the raw grinding mills. No, they aren't cannonballs. Tons of these steel balls are placed in the raw mills, huge rubber-lined steel cylinders which rotate at high speed. Inside the raw mills, the balls are deflected at all angles, thus grinding the limestone to a fine powder. These mills grind the limestone to which water is added to produce a 60% solids paste called slurry. After the addition of a small quantity of iron, the slurry is analyzed, blended and pumped into huge basins. The rotation of these huge paddles maintains an even mixture. The raw material is now ready to be fed into rotary kilns where intense heat will convert it into clinker. These kilns where the raw material is burned are the very heart of the cement making industry. They are gigantic cylinders the length of a city block which convert wet limestone into cement clinker. The big steel tubes lined with fire brick are set on an incline to allow the slurry to travel through by gravity. At the entrance to the kiln, hundreds of lengths of steel chains are fixed to the wall to aid in breaking up the dried slurry as it forms. The kilns rotate at the rate of one revolution per minute, tumbling the drying slurry relentlessly towards the huge burner at the lower end. Australian Portland cement formerly used coal and oil, but now natural gas has replaced them as fuel. The temperature is a dazzling white heat in the burning zone of 1,500 degrees Celsius. The slurry dries, calcines and partially melts as it tumbles under the flame. As with most procedures at the plant, a single console gives accurate and comprehensive control of the burning process. The clinker from each kiln is cooled by forced drafts of air in special coolers and is then conveyed to a covered storage yard. From the storage yard, the clinker is reclaimed by belt conveyors to feed the cement mills. En route, gypsum is added. Each of the mills, some 10 meters long, contains 130 tons of steel grinding balls. Rotating at high speeds, these rotary ball mills reduce the clinker to a fine dry powder fine powder, first quality Portland cement. It is so named because of its similarity to a building stone that was quarried on the Isle of Portland off the English coast in the 19th century. With a production rate of better than 140 tons an hour, meticulous attention is paid to the control of both machinery and quality. At Australian Portland cement, Sophisticated equipment and highly qualified staff are employed to ensure the highest possible standards of quality control. A control laboratory operates around the clock seven days a week, receiving samples drawn each hour from the materials being processed into cement. While throughout the work cement by the thousands of tons is the norm, the scientists here are occupied with cement in almost microscopic amounts. Research into the chemistry of cement is carried out using complex analytical techniques based on X-ray fluorescence, X-ray diffraction, spectrophotometry, microscopy and atomic absorption analysis. From the laboratory findings, the plant operators are able to adjust the plant to ensure optimum quality control. 
In the main works laboratory, the results are checked daily by further exhaustive tests yielding the final proof of the product, high quality concrete. A test to gauge product reliability over a long period. Establishing setting time of cement paste. And the setting time of concrete. The research has resulted in a greatly improved product and a corresponding re-evaluation in each step of the cement making process. Long before the words environment and pollution became fashionable, Australian Portland Cement was taking steps to control emissions that pose an ever-present problem in cement manufacture. Dust control measures were instituted at the plant in 1912, when water spray towers were installed to extract dust from the kiln exit gases. Today, electrostatic precipitators and gravel bed filters highly efficient in reducing airborne dust are the company's main weapons. The electrostatic precipitators remove dust from the kiln exhaust gases. The gravel bed filter cleans the cooler exhaust gases. Emission figures today all conform with the stringent limitation of the Environment Protection Authority. For its final journey within the works, the cement is back on the conveyor belts that climb to the storage silos atop the Fyansford Hill, where it is carefully stored at a location strategically situated for eventual dispatch by rail or road transport. Machines accurately monitor the speedy loading of bulk cement into the road and rail bulk carriers. Approximately two-thirds of the total tonnage leaving the works does so in bulk form. In that film of the 20s, the caption proudly announced that a single machine weighed and bagged the cement. Well, that's true of today's bagging machine, but now it's a computerized giant that occupies five floors. Not only does it bag and weigh the cement, it cleans the dust from the bag, burps the bags for excess air, and delivers them to the pallets for transport. The machine can fill 2,050 bags an hour with high-quality cement, Australian Portland cement.